are still standing up. I'm Craig Shoemaker. That's Rick Thorne, our special guest. Can't wait to dive into this, and you should stay with us. Anyway. That's badass, dude. The closest I ever got to Elvis, I blew it. In 1977, I think it was 77. It was like a few months before he had passed away. He was on tour. I was in Kansas City, and I had a ticket to go. And my aunt talked me out of it. She goes, yo, let me get that Elvis no, ticket. stop I'll it. give you all my records. I got up there, and I was like, no. oh, really? Give me all your records? She took my ticket, and I didn't get the records. <laughs> no. Yeah. Come I even told my mom that not too long ago. I was like, damn, I could have sell the King live. And you, so I blew he, it. And Johnny Cash, you're a Johnny Cash guy as well. Well, yeah. Man, Anybody that wears black. I guess Richard Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Max. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, Johnny Cash helped me out a lot through through my second divorce. Personally? Johnny no, himself no, no, or his, his, his song? His, his music and this, his drive and his, his you know, his kind of like... You know, I was going through a lot, going through a lot of BMX, trying to figure out, you know, I was like, and just, uh, it helped me kind of like, because I call myself the biker in black. I have a tattoo on my neck. Everyone knows me that in the sport. And that's kind of spawned from Johnny Cash, Man in Black. Um, but just kind of more like, you know, my and my band is called Good Guys in Black. Oh. So the whole point to that is even, it's the same with biker in black, is people may look at you a certain way, because I know I'm tattooed, and I got my head tattooed, and people judge me. Everybody judges me, and I get it. I'm, I'm shocking. I'm like, oh, what's this guy doing? Is he in a gang? Is he on drugs? He's going to yeah, rob me, all yeah. this stuff. But all that's like, you could, you we, we unfortunately judge each other, and we don't mean to, uh, I think, because I get that a lot. But it's not who you are on the outside, it's who you are on the inside. Absolutely. Yeah, and that goes back to like— I'll be honest with you. you know, I met you a few weeks ago at Adam Carolla's podcast, and I'll say it again. It had nothing to do with how you were dressed, what you were wearing. I never even noticed your head tattoo. Now I'm going to stare at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to be like that. I would judge a book by its cover. And now I love this. I love this because I would never have had a relationship with you or had you on here— 30 years ago it just wouldn't wouldn't have happened i go oh, look at this guy he's posing or whatever whatever it was you know whatever i, I get we, it we make our judgments just yeah. like you could look at me and go oh my god this guy looks like an attorney <laughs> 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 i have one tattoo what is it i was on or a where, where is it first? i was on a radio show uh -huh. and i was kind of pissed because they were kind of be a it was like a howard stern wannabe show and i'm just there because i want to promote my show in dallas at the improv the addison improv that's the only reason i'm doing this I radio show yeah, yeah, yeah. but they had this thing called drunk bitch friday right and it's this woman this young she was like 20 and they're getting her drunk so that she would vomit it was the stupidest gig as stupidest shtick ever but they were like ha, ha. every time i try to talk they go oh there she goes she's blowing chunks they pull out the lights all like just, shock factor stuff. yeah exactly this is their thing <laughs> Then another guy comes in the other side of the console. They're not even, they're ignoring me now. And he's getting a tattoo of this show, Lex and Terry, it was called, right? And they're old friends of mine, too. I love the show, but they're good guys. But this is, the guy had a mural on his back. Imagine how that, he's regretting that now. That oh, show's shit. long gone. Radio's gone. This guy's got a mural of Lex and Terry on his back. So the guy's a famous tattoo artist. And finally, to get attention, I went, I'll get a tattoo. They're all looking at me now. They said, I said, okay. Do you have any? I said, no, I swear I wouldn't. The reason why I didn't want to is because of acting. Got it. Because you can't do certain parts. Got it. You know, in the 1700s, no, no, no. I get it. I get it. <laughs> You're going to have to wear a white wig, bro. I know. Or just play like a crackhead or someone in the military. There's no crackheads in, in, no, in the and 1700s. You're not going to be bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, the Revolutionary no, War. I know, I know, yeah. Uh, here he comes. Put makeup on me. Yeah. <laughs> here comes neck tat. Yeah. So I said, they said, what do you want to get? And I said, I swore I wouldn't get one. I said, just give me a dot, right? So they put a dot. They said, what about three dots? And zzz, 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 they put the three dots on there right here. And and then as soon as it was finished, they said, it's a gang symbol. It means <laughs> it means jail, hospital, and death. <laughs> La Vida Loca. <laughs> and my kids have tried to scratch it off when they were little. It looks like a radiation symbol. <laughs> it's this little triangle of dots. So you and I have a lot in common. I might have to we're, get the same I'm, tattoo after this interview. I'm, I'm tatted up. Anybody got, you got a tattoo gun in the we, shop? We, we, we could be brothers. Oh, well, there's one down the street. We actually did a piece there. Remember, Gianni, we went to that tattoo place? A really good one over here. Oh, sick. What's the name of it again? Jeez, I'm blank. And really nice people. I probably uh, know them. I know a lot of the tattoos. You probably do. Yeah, then, I know that world pretty, pretty. yeah. Yeah, I, it's a world. You know, it is. It's a world that I had no idea about. I didn't really, you know, that I had no resonance with it. But now I get it. You know, well, I, I get it. It's just, that's it's, your it's, punk it's, rock deep inside. Look at you. <laughs> the reason, okay. The, that, that's, that's way deep. <laughs> that's got, there, when, when, when things started to pop off with action sports, we were all like, I understand the branding. 
and how hard I worked. I mean, I worked in a restaurant for uh, seven years uh, prior to getting paid to ride my bike. I used to bus tables in Olive Garden, ride my bike to work, the whole deal, the whole thing. And so I wanted to brand myself because I knew I had a personality and I knew that that would go past this competitiveness of like contest. So I branded myself as a biker in black wearing all, I was the first to be like all black tattooed out in the BMX world. Wow. No one was doing that. Really? Yeah. Because I felt like it was time for me to grow. Were they dressed in an IZOD? <laughs> no, they would be, they would just be like their, their team Jersey or short, no, oh, you know, no right, tattoos, right, just okay. kind of more kind of a just kind of blending clean, with everyone else. Clean cut. Yeah. yeah. And I was kind of more of the, more of the punk vibe cause I was into punk and, the, and I told myself, I, I felt like, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I felt like I was being myself. I felt like I was being my voice ultimately with writing. And it wasn't until I started to develop my own style. Like, but I wanted to be tattooed. I wanted to develop and brand myself. I wanted the things I was into that I liked. And so I went for that. I, I thought I was going for it before, but I wasn't. So, so you know, all the things we talked about, like, like marriage and divorce and all these things, it was like, you know, I wasn't really like, I thought I was being me and like, like expressing myself ultimately. Yeah. And I wasn't, and it wasn't until I started a band because then you get on a band and you don't have your helmet on, you don't have your bike. And you, yeah. oh, but then I said, let me challenge it more comedy. You don't have anything. Oh, bare bones. It's like, let's go. Been, you're I've been you're doing the it product. Since I was 17. It saved my life. That's awesome. So you get that. You get it's, it. Oh, absolutely. Save my life. It still saves my life. It still saves my life and not from doing shows and I get paid well and all that. It's not from that. It's an inner, it's a shift that takes place. Yeah. When you're connecting with people. Yeah. That's why I have the podcast too. It's a connection. And I'm trying to, re- not, I always use the word try. I shouldn't use the word try. What we're doing here is we're giving people our experiences. And then you turn it over. You just let the results be what they may. It might hit somebody. Somebody might say, hey, Napoleon Hill, I'm going to go check that out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, hey, yeah. I'm going to stop rescuing. I'm going to stop uh, people pleasing, whatever it is. Because, being on the other side of that, that's who I want in here as guests. Got it. People on the other side. They're, they're, you know, I noticed something when I on stage. That's another thing is people give you immediate feedback. That's what's great about stand-up. They give you an immediate feedback immediate. of what you're putting out there. Exactly. You don't have that in any other art form. No. Even music. You know, no. With other people or whatever. It's everybody's, you know, it's a band. Yep. But this is just yep. solo, just like you were saying, just you and the mic and that connection. It, hopefully it's a divine connection that you're having. It's it, ethereal. It's the rawest form of it's entertainment that I've form, done. Exactly. Ever, ever. I mean, ever. I can't think of anything else. It's, it's any more raw or even uplifting. It can be so uplifting, you know, when people laugh. But I, what I learned one time was I s- talked about my divorce, and people were upset, and I understand why. I wasn't ready to talk about the divorce yet. Got I wasn't it. on the other side of the biz- bitterness. Oh, I see. Yeah, work on the resentment, and then present it, and then it's funny because now you can just poke fun at yourself and her, and people understand it's not an anger thing. You're not so talk, you know, you're not con- condemning her like you were talking about. You talk. You haven't healed your yourself at the yeah, time. You weren't healed. I talk about my kids too. It's not like it's not oh, a word so of shit. it is bitterness. Not a word of it. it has anything to do with anything except for I'm on the other side of this. I can now poke fun at everyone. Yeah. And that's the key. I tell people it's not your therapy on stage, it's your therapy off stage. Absolutely. Work on that stuff and then you can bring it as your art form. Yeah, and I I know we got to wrap this soon, but I'm going to tell you one thing to comment on what you just said. It's funny you say that cuz there's this new joke I'm working on while I'm layering it. Yeah. And it's about like sometimes my ex-wife would call me crying and be like, "Oh man, we're breaking up, you know." And and and, and then that's where the uh a thorn psych- the, the psychiatrist in me comes in. Hey, ho, let me help you out here cuz uh-huh. cuz here's the deal. He he uh, he's well off, okay. And the joke is, is that if you get divorced, just make sure she finds someone that's more well off than you, yeah. because she calls me and they're gonna break up. And I'm like, no, stick together, stick together, because <laughs> you know, it's just, I thought it was funny. I mean, I'm working on it. <laughs> no, Do you know what I mean? Of course, like, I just, know what just you mean. Just find some guy. So she just pray I, she finds somebody that's I, rich so she leaves you alone. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I had a similar <laughs> thing. I was dealing with the, I was dealing with the another ex. She's got major stuff going on coming after me, and I thought about literally hiring someone for fifty grand a year. <laughs> so as you date her, and then all of the onus is off of me. She's not coming down on me because it's all my court costs. It cost me a million dollars just to hold on to fifty percent custody. Because she would just come up with another thing and another thing and another thing. Even for fifty percent? Huh? 
Fifty percent. She wanted a hundred percent. She wanted to move them to Rhode Island, and she wanted her way, and all that. They'll, they'll, they'll not stop. You know, you've heard of woman scorned. Well, they can't. They can't take them if if you both if you were married and you both don't agree on it. I know, but yeah. what I'm saying, she tried other tricks of saying mm-hmm. I did this and saying I did that. It was just awful. It was horrible. So I thought I'm going to hire someone who's going to be. He'll be on the other side of the anger and the resentment and the rage, right? Got it. And then I, he would be calling me, going, "I'm going to need a raise. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to work out." So. Anyway, what well, man, this and I'm going to make it clear. I'm cool. Fast, how fast that, that went fast, by? but I want to make it clear uh, uh, with me uh, on this, so no one gets weird out here in this world. Me and my ex are cool. I'm They're cool not. With, I'm no, cool. I'm cool with everybody. I said you don't come across I, like I, that. I, 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 would, I would joke. You know, comedians always get a bad rep for everything in the world nowadays. It's so crazy. Yeah, they're trying they're to cancel fun, us. Man. They don't so, hear the truth. It's, it's look. It's all the truth, it's, including. The scars, including the the difficulties, it's all just the truth. But it doesn't come from a place of bitterness with you, no. and it doesn't with me either. No, we're on the other side. That's what I'm trying to get across. Is I use the word trying again. <laughs> hey, it's, but it's good that you acknowledge that. It's good that you under, uh, acknowledge that because when you say trying, your subconscious here is trying, and then it's like trying. So what? Man, I, we could me and you could talk all day. I know. But you could say like, is the time really up? Okay, here's an example. Really? My God, that was Oh, it fast. is. It's fast. Okay, here's an example. If I was to go like this, uh, oh, I'm broke, then your subconscious mind goes, oh, you're broke, absolutely. more broke. Or go, ah, I'd rather spend my money on something else. See the difference how Bro, your mind interprets that? Energy follows thought. I'm telling you. And so it's good th- you acknowledge when the trying when thing. your thoughts are a certain way, the energy will follow. And it also, and the reverse is true as well. When, you're, when you have positive thoughts, it's not Pollyanna. It's not like putting a sticker, a post-it note on your mirror. This is real stuff that's conditioning. But it's a conditioning, like you said, it takes a while. To recondition yeah. the way we are taught and the way we're programmed takes a lot. Reprogramming. Of, it's a repetition. I like to say repetition causes intuition. Listen to those audiobooks re- while you re- sleep, repeat, bro. You'll repeat. see. Yeah. I gotta, you. I gotta, I gotta, I'm finished the John Stamos book. And listen to Molly Crew, too. Because no, I would I'm never kidding. become. <laughs> 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 That'll get you more trouble. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, anyway, Rick, real pleasure, man. This is such a you know. Let's let's do a round two or something. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, 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 they're talking in our earphones here, telling us. Do I die here? And, and you and I are going. We have so much more to talk about. I could have swore they said, "Get that fucking bike rider out of here." <laughs> I could have swore they said, "Let's change hosts to the bike rider." <laughs> That's what I could have sworn they said. That. I I know this is it. Anyway. Everybody, uh, how do we find you on? Uh, uh, just at, at Rick Thorne, everything, and then Thorne I Thorne with an E. Yeah, Thorne with an E, mm-hmm. and then my website's RickThorne.tv, which I need to update. I'm so lazy, but just I hate to sound so cheesy, but just Google me, bro. All right, I'm yeah. gonna Google you. Yeah, All right, thanks, man. I'm out it was, there. A, it was a lot of fun, uh, and keep following uh, this podcast and, and spread the word because we really are about helping people. Uh, through certain circumstances by sharing our lives yeah. with you yeah. and you can get something out of it. All right. Anyway, until the next time, I still need my wrap up. I don't know what my wrap up is. <laughs> I used to have say, a really good one. Uh, I used to say, enlighten the fuck up, will you? That one's good. Or say, I'm still standing. Oh, I told you I have that Broadway voice. Feel I'm like still standing. Yeah, that's it right there. Oh, no, it's not going to work. <laughs> right. Anyway, see you all next time.